This is the Financially Simple Podcast, a show dedicated to destroying the complexities of money for today's small business owner. And now, here's your host, pizza-loving, certified financial planner, Justin Goodbread. Welcome to Financially Simple. I'm your host, Justin Goodbread. And today, we're going to continue our dive into a best-in-class finance department for your business to grow maximum value. Today's episode is titled, The Role of a CFO or a CPA. So CFO, let's go ahead and lay that out there. That stands for Chief Financial Officer, and a CPA is a Certified Public Accountant. So you're going to hear me today referring to CFO or CPA quite a bit. Now, I get that many small businesses cannot afford a full-time CFO or a full-time CPA. Now, they may be one of the same, and I realize that many people can't afford this. I mean, to hire a full-time CFO or a full-time CPA, depending on what part of the country you're in, you could be sitting somewhere in the neighborhood of seventy, eighty, a hundred, hundred fifty thousand dollars a year just in that position. So I realize that many times the small business is not going to be able to hire an employee to fulfill that role. So that's going to lead the small business owner to go out and hire a part-time CFO. I actually have friends that do this type of work. They do the part-time work. They work with many small businesses and act as CFOs and provide them with reports that I need and that the business owner would need. Or they may hire a CPA to handle some of the work. And the reason why I say some of the work is you may say, well, Justin, I have a CPA, therefore I don't need a CFO. You would think so, but many times certified public accountants, oftentimes they just become compliance experts. In other words, just worrying about taxes. And they're fully not doing the job or the role of a CFO. I'm so amazed about how many CPAs forget basic CFO work. So I realize that you may be in a business that you can't afford a full-time employee. I get that. Nonetheless, I am not aware of any business that I currently work with that doesn't have some sort of a part-time CPA and advisor. Most of them, they're hiring me as an advisor, and I'm working in that CFO capacity sometimes, or our team is, and their CPA and I work together. Now, as I've said before, I'm not a CPA. I am not a certified public accountant. I have no desire to deal with that. I'm forward thinking. I'm not historically focused oftentimes. So I want to spend some time today talking about those particular areas. So let's think about the organizational chart, an org chart, if you will. And I want to lay out the CFO world in a form of four different areas. Four different areas where the CFO focuses. Area number one is treasury or money. Area number two is tax, or I call it compliance. Area number three is accounting. And the fourth is finance. You may say, well, holy cow, I didn't realize there was those different areas. See, most of the time, like I mentioned earlier, we think that the CFO or the CPA is only focused on tax. And friends, there's so much more to this role in accounting. So in a finance organization, if you lay it out, you typically have one person or one persons responsible for the bigger department head. So let's call this a departmental organizational charge for your finance department. So let's break it down. Let's break each of these four divisions of this department down. The first will be treasury. So treasury is going to deal with cash. How much cash should you have in your business? Should you have investments in your business? Maybe you're buying a building. Maybe you're buying another business. Maybe you're using formal investments. I have clients that actually invest in the stock market for their business. We're talking about accounts payable and accounts receivable. These are how monies are flowing in and flowing out, the processes to make sure those work effectively, and expenses, making sure that bills are paid, payroll. All these things come in the treasury area. The second one is tax. So tax could be federal. It could be at the U.S. government level. It could be state. It could be local. Or it could be some sort of a compliance tax. Taxes aren't all the time going to the government. Many times a tax can be something that is a statutory compliance issue. Accounting is going to be your operations, keeping numeric order on the flow of your business. We just finished up the operational deep dive in the last episode, and the accounting department can track the actual data points for your operations. They're going to track your accounts receivables. They're going to track your consolidations. 
They're going to do general ledger maintenance. That's your accounting department. And then finance comes in last. And that's external reporting, internal reporting, FP&A, and internal audits. So you have four different divisions. Now, for the small business owner, many times I'll see that treasury is handled by the business owner. They're the ones who's making decisions on when to deposit monies, how they're going to collect monies, where they're going to spend monies. Many times a business owner in a small business is doing that. And they're hoping that the accounting department, who's keeping general ledger maintenance, often they'll hire out a CPA firm to take care of accounting for them. And they'll ask them to make sure that the expenses are recorded properly in the P&L and make sure the balance sheet's accurate. And they'll hire the CPA to do tax work. But often, What's left outside the CPA's purview, many times in small businesses I see it, is efficiency in treasury, efficiency in the way money flows, and efficiency in finance, internal and external reporting, FP&A, and internal audits. It's sad to me, it's very sad to me, that many, many, many CPAs want to focus on compliance, tax. It's sad to me. I know many, many, many CPAs that are become no more than order fillers. They just take the information and put it into the form for the governments. There are a few accountants out there who are actually very good at doing accounting. They actually like accounting. They hire somebody to do it, and the accountant oversees it. But they track, and they make sure that the accounts receivables are paid, the consolidations are there, the general ledger maintenance is taken care of. They often don't deal with operational issues that much. Typically, that's an internal issue. But I've yet to see very many accounting firms who help you with treasury or help you with finance. So we're going to spend some time in the couple of episodes coming forward on each of these four divisions of our new finance department that we're laying out. We're going to talk in detail about each of these individual areas. You are listening to Financially Simple, destroying the complexities of money for today's small business owner. Now, the CFO the financial person in place, they actually have to have four different faces. They face four different directions. And this is where a good chief financial officer can make or break your company. And for most small businesses, this is where the planner, the good business planner can help you. So let's lay out the four faces of a CFO. The first one is going to be a strategist. The strategist, they're the person who's focused on performance. How's the company doing and how can we drive the performance even greater? That's one face of a CFO. Another face of a CFO is the operator. They're trying to get efficiency within the business. So now we're strategizing how to drive performance. And the second one is we're working on efficiency and that's the operator. The third face is that of a steward, that of a steward. The person who's there to help control the money, to make sure that monies are not wasted. Now, here's where it gets interesting. We automatically know if we're being a steward of something, we're trying to control, then this seems almost opposite of a strategist who's out there trying to figure out how to spend money to drive performance. And so where it gets very frustrating to the planners oftentimes or to the business owners is if you have a very conservative strategist and a very aggressive steward, then you can end up with a business that is cash rich and it's not performing very well. It's not moving at the rapid pace of the entrepreneurial spirit. Think about it. Most entrepreneurs I know, myself included, want to charge hell with a water pistol. Man, we are like, grab the bull by the horns and wrestle it to the ground and tie it up and then make some T-bones. I mean, that's just the way we think. And so a CFO oftentimes seems in combatant with our entrepreneurial spirit because they'll be not weighted properly. They'll be weighted too much to that steward to where they're trying to control the money and they're missing that strategist face. In opposite to the operator, our fourth face is that of a catalyst, the one who is executing. So here's where that becomes a combat scenario. The operator is looking for efficiency and the catalyst is looking to create execution, to move things more rapidly through a system. Those are in direct opposites of each other. And so if your CFO or your person or the person you've hired to help you in your organization is not equally balanced as it relates to that of an operator and that of a catalyst, then we run into a problem to where we may be more focused on efficiency, trying to get the amount of work done without 
advanced execution. Or we may be more focused on execution, just getting it done and be damned the efficiency. And so the CFO has to be a balanced individual or has to be a balanced department. So for most small businesses, when I say small business, I'm talking about businesses with less than $5 million of annual revenues outside of COG, cost of goods and services. We're talking about businesses who employ less than 100 people. For most small businesses, this is where your board of advisor can come in. Yeah, you're going to want to have that CPA. You're going to want to have that individual who's there working with you on a compliance standpoint. I've noticed that CPAs are often very stewardess in their process. They're there to control, help control the money. They're not very strategic in their approach and not thinking about performance. Maybe yourself, you've said this, that, man, my CPA is just so conservative. What you may be voicing there is that they're not balanced between that steward approach and that strategist approach. You got to have some good balance there. So oftentimes, and I'll be honest, the CFP, the certified financial planner, we're out there oftentimes being strategist. We're just trying to get things done that oftentimes a good steward CPA is very helpful for as a good offset there. We were in our tax planning with several of our clients this year, and the planning side of me says, here's some ways you can plan to reduce your taxes. The conservative side of the CPA says, yeah, those my work, but, and then they fill in the blank with something. And ultimately it was the control portion of it. And the client was sitting there trying to decide, well, who's right? And it wasn't that one was wrong, one was right. It was we're both right. We're looking at it from two different perspectives. Which do you want to use in your business planning or in your tax planning? So as you're looking at this four faces of the CFO, the goal is, is to build a finance department which is equalized. Now, you may be in a growth phase and you say, you know what? We want to focus on execution and performance this year and not as much on efficiency and control or You may say, you know what, we've just come through a major growth phase and now we're trying to create efficiencies and now we're trying to control our finances, get them all in order and let's not be focused on performance or execution as much. So in your finance department, especially as it revolves around the CFO personalities or individuals that you're going to use to build this department up, you have four different divisions. You have the treasury division, the tax division, the accounting division, and the finance division. And each of these divisions have an individual or individuals, plural, different organizations who are facing in four different directions, all vying for the finance functionality of your business. There's not a right or wrong way to deal with this. And depending on where you're at in your business cycle, you may need one of these faces to be more powerful than the other. The goal is to create equilibrium. The goal is to reduce risk. The goal is to create a strategist, an operator, a steward, and a catalyst. Those four individuals or those four faces of those CFOs to be equal and in harmony, thus reducing risk in your organization. And if you say, Justin, I have no idea what you're talking about. Look, we're going to tear this apart in detail. Remember, we're starting in a funnel. We're starting a deep dive. So I'm giving you a lot of information at the top level as we're just breaking into the surface. And we're going to start swimming down into each of these areas and identify how we can build a best-in-class finance department. Hey guys, check out the blog, financiallysimple.com. And while you're there, you may want to sign up for the newsletter. We are getting tons of subscribers. I had a tax attorney call me over Christmas and he said, your blog's a rock star, man. I like the way it's designed. It's one of the ones I like to read on a weekly. He goes, but I just noticed you went to bi-weekly. I said, yeah, we're kind of trying some things around just to see how our readership is going and see if we can drive it up. We have a lot of open rates. And we were talking to a marketing firm and they're like, man, this is pretty creative how many open rates you have. So I'm going to challenge you to go sign up for the newsletter. You know, life is hard. I say this every week. It is. Life is hard. Life is good. We just went through a Christmas and New Year's season. I know that I spent time with my family, just loving on them. Life can be frustrating. I got to tell you, business, oh my goodness, business can be so frustrating sometimes. Money, money should be the least of our worries. It doesn't have to be frustrating. Let's continue to make our lives at least financially simple. Hey, y'all go out and make it a great day. You have been listening to the Financially Simple Podcast. The information in this show is for informational purposes only. This show is not investment advice. Instead, seek help from a competent financial advisor. Justin Goodbread, CFP, is an investment advisor representative of Heritage Investors, a registered investment advisor. 